All right, Necromaniacs, I know it took a long time for me to make this video and I apologize, but I really wanted to do my best and get a lot of games in and try to give you guys the best accounting for this gang to let you know how amazing they are. They're one of my favorite gangs, um, close gang to my heart. And I want to let you know that even with getting the games in that I got, I don't feel like I'm uh, representing this gang to show you how great it is. Um, but, you know, I can only do so much. Unfortunately, because of COVID, I can only get a game every few weeks, if not every few months, unfortunately, um, as things have gotten worse here in Oklahoma. And uh, we've just been really careful because my wife is in medical uh, field and unfortunately we can't risk it for things like games. So um, because of that, I'm going to continue to update you guys, and please, in the comments below, if you have any questions, if you think that I, don't, I didn't answer something great or I didn't cover anything well enough, please let me know. I, I don't feel like I did, and I want you guys to ask questions if you have them, and I will do my best to answer those um, to the best of my ability, and I think that will hopefully help me feel better about it. If you guys have any questions, I can, I can answer on that. Um, to tell you what I think about this gang. Um, so please, if I, if I mess anything up, you can tell I'm, I'm wearing a different shirt, uh, in different parts of the, of the video because I would film this over, uh, three different sessions and, uh, then I tried to patch it all together. So, um, there's that. And, uh, but I guess I, what I wanted to show you guys is all the work that I put into this because I had to paint, I had to practice, I had to play. Um, so let's get into it. Thanks. To review the Gene Stealer cult, I had a lot of work to do. I had to arrange my delicate brushes, prepare every detail with precision, paint even more fighters to ensure that every weapon and piece of war gear was properly tested. I had to perfect my skills. I tried every variation. I honed my technique. I played as many games as I could until I was mostly ready to post this review. Kind of. All right, Necromaniacs, here we go. Back at it, working on the Gene Stealer Colts. Let's do a review. It's probably going to be two parts as usual because I'm a little long-winded, but I want you guys to know uh, that I spent a lot of time working on this. I wanted to, as you saw in the video montage, I spent a lot of time working on uh, the miniatures. I want to get them all painted up for you. I try and have all my minis painted on there. That's just something for me. I can't stand putting unpainted minis down on the tabletop, much less on a video that the whole world can see. So I have to get everything painted. Um, if you could see down here on the floor in front of me, I have hundreds of models and a giant shame pile that I'm working on in a hundred different projects all at once for uh, Star Wars uh, Imperial Assault, which we got a bunch of we're working on. We got, of course, Warhammer stuff. Um, fantasy, I guess, is what I would call it. Uh, the old school style, not 40K. I play 40K, but I mostly play Eldar. And um, right now, of course, Necromunda things that are on the table. So I also just picked up uh, Rising Sun, so I have to paint all of that. So I got a lot of painting on the table, and I've been working on all those projects literally all at the same time. So I apologize that everything has come to a head. Also, I wanted to get games in with all of these miniatures and all of the different options that I usually don't use when I play with Gene Steeler Colts because Gene Steeler Colts is I definitely would say my primary gang and I wanted to I wanted to give you an overview of the whole gang not just what I use because I know what I use I know what I like to use and it's not the best stuff that's for sure but I wanted to try and try everything out to see if it was good um I also have uh, been uh, got a frosty brew here. We're gonna try something else so I don't choke in the middle of the video I don't know if you guys watched the first edit that I posted up in my last video But I literally choked in the middle of the video and uh, had to take a time out run and get a drink of water Because um, I choked and so that's on me. We're gonna change it up with the champagne of beers edit it out here Don't 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 no sponsors. Sorry So Try and keep me uh, from getting parched so that I don't choke in the middle of a video like a chump. Um, 
All right, let's talk about their strengths first. I guess the first thing is that they have amazing adaptations. They can buy things like extra arms on all of their guys, which is amazing. Um, so they can do all kinds of things with that. They can have, they have really good skills. I got my notes here. I don't even see this mishmash of uh, horribly written stuff, but uh, they have great skills. I would consider them on par with what I call the, or I consider the best skill set uh, gang, which would be Deloc. Um, they are very similar to them in that way, in that they take some of the similar skills. I really like their skill set. I really like their abilities. Probably there'd be, so them, the lock, um, next tier underneath there would, to me, again, this is all me, Orlock. I love the Orlock skills because I like Munition here. I like some of their cool stuff that they can do. Um, again, that's more of a preference thing. That's just, it, it works for my play style. So it's not that they have the greatest skills. They're, that they're not top tier gangs because of that. I, I don't even know if you could tier these gangs Mainly because this isn't competitive. It's that you don't go to a, a Necromunda tournament. So it's hard to tier some of these because I play the games how I like them. Um, how I want think they should look. How I uh, think they should play. And that is something that I like about Necromunda because of that. Um, sidebar. Let's talk about the new video game that just came out. Are they call them video games these days? I'm 40, so that's like, that, I they probably don't even call them that anymore. But Necromunda Underhive just came out on Steam. I've tried it out. Here's what I don't like about it. I like in Necromunda Tabletop that when you shoot a guy, you could shoot him with the littlest pea shooter of a gun, but if you do, if he say has enough wounds or, you know, only has one wound and you roll that skull, you killed him with it. Um, the main gripe I have about the game is you could shoot someone with like a heavy bolter like five times and it's just like, you know, uh, it hits him for minus 57 damage, whatever it is, whenever, whenever it hits them. I've only played it uh, for a few hours, um, just going through the, the, the tutorial story mode. And you'll hit them multiple times, and I'm just like, I would rather you roll dice like you do in Blood Bowl, the video game, and if you roll good, you just kill the guy. If you don't roll good, then you, you know, seriously injure him, or just flesh wound him, just like you, like, why not use the dice? You got the IP, why not use the system that is already there instead of making up this weird uh, HP system thing like that. I, I Maybe it's just me, but I don't like a guy who gets shot by bullets, me mega heavy bolter bullets multiple times and they hit and it doesn't kill the guy. Like that would kill a normal human. He's not a space marine. So I don't like that getting hit multiple times and, and taking multiple damage. If you hit a guy with a chainsword, a normal human with a chainsword across the chest, you, you're probably going to cut them in half. And to, so you're just, uh, I don't know, rant over, moving back to what we're getting back on. Um, so I don't love the game, I guess is what I'm saying. I, I've only played it for about two, three hours. Already don't like it. I like the moving around. I mean, it's very similar in that way, but it's... <sighs> moving on. Um, they have an amazing model range for G Sealer Colts. Literally, you could use any other grain and, and stick on or model even that kind of the, you know, Bajoran, I don't even know what they call this thing, gene stealer thing uh, on their heads. And you, they're good. You could you could do an Escher gang, that's gene stealer eyes. You could do um, anything. You could pull from anything, even just slap some gene stealer cult heads on the miniatures um, with no hair and stuff because it probably falls out because of hashtag alien gunk. And, um, there you are. There you go. The Gene Stealer Gang. So you can steal from anything. They already have a great range because they are literally have a whole 40k army of them. Um, I'm working, I'm using all their vehicles and stuff for the vehicle rules um, that I'm developing. And uh, so amazing range. You can, you can steal them. They, anyone can be affected. Therefore, anyone, any miniature can be used as a Gene Stealer cult uh, miniature. Um, they have a lot of play styles, I would say, because you can go full uh melee really uh, in a way i mean you're gonna have to take your gangers which are gonna be amazing but their their melee guys are good and i feel like their shooting guys are can also be good um so you have a lot of different, you so you can go shooting you can go melee you can kind of go a hybrid you can do like a, a psyker with guards is what i would think of it is, is how i'd probably play it get the psyker into position and start melting mines um and then probably the bad things about the, the them, the, the the negatives are you got one wound champions, not great. Um, 
probably the main, and that's because you have those adepts and uh, what are the other, what's the two leaders called there? The alphas. Uh, adepts and alphas are probably your main character because it's that hive queen. It's that head of the serpent that's controlling everything out, every, the rest of the gang. That's probably how I, that's how I envision it. That's how I feel Tyranids would work if they had infiltrated human beings. You have that head of the serpent. You, you cut the head off, it might all fall apart. Some of their weird stuff that they have, they have campaign rules that can uh, be tough to, to work around, but at the same time, it depends on what uh, campaign you're playing. Like I said, I can't tell you what to do in every single campaign, every single situation. Always, all I can do is try and generalize and say, here's what is expected. Um, they can't sell enemy. They can't deal with the guild, I guess you'd say. So you can't sell enemies to the guilder. They're worth full price if you do sell a, a, a Gene Sailor Cult to the guilders. That when you go to a dock, you have to pay more. I want to say it's a D6 instead of a D3 um, to get your guys healed up because you have to like pay to keep them quiet so they don't tell on you for being Gene Sealer. Um, and then um, the rep. For be getting hangers on, you have to get to like 10 rep instead of, I want to say five after for the second guy, stuff like that. So the rep is, more rep is required to bring in those hangers on because obviously you're a gene stealer cult and they don't really want to work with you because you're a little creepy. So if you get to rep high enough, then they're like, ah, I know they're bad guys, but I need money. Um, so they'll work with you once you get that. Uh, they're counting Zorlocks for Domin uh, was it Dominion territories and stuff like that if you're doing that type of campaign. Um, but otherwise, that's that's not really too much of a bad thing, I would say. <clears throat> Let's talk about weird powers with the Adept. Um, they have some good stuff. They have some bad stuff. Actually, for good stuff, for Psyker powers, that's actually really good stuff, I would say. Uh, hypnosis, I would rate it. So let's just say out of five stars, four stars for hypnosis, uh, almost five, almost five. It's really good. Um, it does need line of sight, and that's probably where it starts to fall apart versus some of the other stuff in here. Um, and it helps you avoid like the mask abilities, stuff like that. All right, let's talk about Unbreakable Will. Now, that's going to help you out within nine inches. Uh, any guys that are taking uh, what I would call break tests, uh, fear checks, stuff like that, that are going to make, they're already. They're already in trouble if they're taking that. I don't like planning on failure, is, is something I'll say in some of the other videos. I don't like things that were gonna mitigate damage if you're running into trouble. If you're already taking those tests, you're already in trouble, you already got guys dying, causing other guys to run away. Um, I don't wanna plan on that. I don't wanna do a thing because I think a guy's gonna die over here hoping that, I guess, planning that the enemy's gonna roll well and kill a guy so that another guy runs away. Don't plan for that. Use something that's gonna melt somebody's mind across the board nine inches instead of help a guy out over here from uh, failing a break test nine inches. Uh, I just, I wouldn't, I'm not geared that way to use that. Um, so I don't love that one. Uh, Zealot gives you the ability to help a guy who's getting into close combat to reroll ones. Not horrible, uh, but again, two stars for that one because it's, um, uh, Rerolling ones. I mean, I, I, if it was re-rolls, re just re-rolls on a, on a combat attack, that would probably be better. Um, so it's just, and it takes your whole turn uh, to do that, to give them re-roll ones. Um, so one in six chance of rolling a one. Hopefully, I mean, you've got, what, two, three attacks on most of these guys with charge, etc. You, you're not going to be rolling that many dice. And if you're, I don't know, I just, I don't love that one, sorry. And I could see it being three stars, but I keep it at two because I just don't use it. Next going to be mind control. Again, these are count, counted as skills, so you're only going to get so many of these. I would use mind control and hypnosis. Those are probably my top two. Uh, mind control, five stars. This is the one you stick on them. This is going to be my first thing I stick on them. Uh, doesn't require a line of sight. You're just melting brains. All you got to do is get these guys near the middle of the board or near something, especially somewhere in cover where they can't be targeted, and they're just reaching out and uh, Melton Brains. I love it. That's the way this should work. Um, then you got a sail and Force Blast. I don't like these because they happen within three inches of, it's like a template thing, um, around your uh, Psyker. And if someone is that close already, it's it's too late. Unless you're you know able to bust someone off of a, a rooftop or something like that. I don't like these because 
again, if they've got within three inches of you, you're in trouble. So you want to keep these guys away from danger, keep them protected, keep your guys around them to protect them. If you're using that psyker, this is the hive mind. This is the mother you got to protect. And she needs to be doing work, not, you know, fending off people that are trying to get in her face and kill her. So if, she, if they're that close, it's too late. Um, both of those, probably a sail, one star, and a force blast, uh, two stars. They're, they're not amazing. Um, force blast is a little bit better than a sail, but I wouldn't take it. Um, the extra arms, great. I guess the main thing is the leader. The Alpha is able to use it with, say, Gunfighter. That's what I use it for. I love the three-arm Gunfighter. I'm going to put him up on there. He's one of my favorite miniatures in the whole game. The whole game, period, of the 40K universe. I love the Gunman Gene Stealer. Um, so let's keep moving. You got two leaders. That's probably, that's kind of like a, a, a good thing that you don't get in a lot of games is you have two different options. So again, this is play, that diversity of play style. You can go this way, you can go that way. I prefer the alpha because I love my gunfighter alpha, um, but I also could see a great build using the uh, adept, getting her to a crucial area with you know, like say uh, a, a place where scenario objectives are. So she can, anyone that use those as bait to get anyone's brain melted uh, as they get close. And um, then you have two different type of gangers. Again, amazing. I love the aberrants. I get it. They can't really, I guess it's harder for them to level up. I mean, but also they can kill better than probably a ganger can. Well, depending. I, I, I love my gangers, and my gangers do some dang work. So, um, versus aberrants and neophytes. You got two different types of gangers. Again, extremely versatile. Uh, it's one of the reasons I love this gang, and I use both. Um, skill types. Uh, the adept uses cunning and leadership and has psyker abilities as one of those skill types. Uh, the alpha has combat and leadership. Um, the hybrids have cunning and ferocity, and the aberrants have brawn and ferocity. And so I guess the hybrids are your uh, uh, champions, one wound champions. That's probably the, the, down, the downside of those guys. Um, but they do have cunning and cunning is one of the best skill sets in the game. And um, those aberrants, if you can get them to become specialists, I guess you'd say, and again, you can get the kills, you can get the chances that they're gonna get to become a specialist and then they can use brawn and ferocity, both of which are, are decent uh, skill sets. Let's talk about the weapons. Um, first, auto gun. My favorite weapon possibly in the game uh, for this. Auto gun's amazing. I love rapid fire weapons. I've said that on pretty much every video I've ever made. Uh, five stars for the auto gun. A neophyte with an auto gun has done, they, uh, I have neophytes with auto guns that have killed uh, every type of creature in, the, in every type of gang member, everything there is. They are almost always my MVP is just a neophyte with an auto gun. And it's amazing because people will run out in the middle of the street because they're like, hey, he just got an auto gun, I'm fine. No, he's not. My guy's gonna reach out 23 inches, get that roll, hit it, take them out, get three hits uh, with the with the rapid fire, uh, roll it up and just annihilate the guy. So you can never underestimate the auto gun. You, I feel you get away with that type of stuff with a last gun where it's one shot, it can't rapid fire you. And you know, at the worst, you know, it, it, you, you might have to roll a, uh, a, a armor roll, but I mean, really, it's the auto gun has the potential to really wreck someone because of the potential to get three hits with the rapid fire. Um, last gun, again, sturdy weapon. I just, I always default to the auto gun. So I literally have nobody with a las gun. It's a good, that's four stars right there. E good weapon. I can't say enough about a las gun because it's upgradable. I get it guys, but I love the auto gun because of the rapid fire. Shotgun. Now this is actually, I used a lot of the, this, I've used the shotgun in this gang more than any other gang, trying it out. And I actually really like the shotgun that they carry because it's, I would consider it like a baby bolt gun is probably the way I see it because it has that, uh, uh, the, what is it called? It has the solid shot round that the damage of it is very much like a short ranged bolt gun. Um, so, and with good ammo. So that's probably the good thing about it is it's cheap. Um, 
it's it's like a baby bolt gun and it has decent ammo can't lose with that uh four almost five stars four stars um but i would i would i would make this a four and a half stars if i had half of a thumb on there um close combat weapons fighting knife i mean i guess you could stick it on an aberrant and it might help out um so it's good for an aberrant not good for everybody else i i, I wouldn't bother with it for most everybody else chain sword great um five stars for chain sword i love i love everything i love the rending i love the parry i love swords because of that parry ability um especially when you have three arms uh, all of a sudden it gets pretty dang good and especially you take a parry skill on top you can really start deflecting uh attacks as they come in now if the guy has like a two plus uh weapon skill that might might still might not work as uh, i'll show you but uh anybody else other than say a uh, corpse grinder uh, chieftain and you're gonna be okay so shock stave I, I love the shock stave um, and also we'll put the whip together with this shock stave it's got reach um, whip has reach um, I have a dual whip uh, aberrant that I love uh, four stars for both these whips are great I use whips in Escher I use whips in uh, the Gene Sierra Colt um, and then it's kind of like flails for the Kador or even for Warlock. Um, it's kind of a standard weapon for these guys when you can take it, especially on an Aberrant. Um, we'll put, post up the, my Aberrant with the whip on here, show you how he looks. Um, he's a little unwieldy because he's, he's giant, um, but I love him. He does work. And he can get past that flamer guy who pins you every turn. He, you can't pin lock this guy because he has that three inch reach and he can get out there and touch you because of his ability to charge um, his movement plus three plus three more for the whips can get past that nine inch template. Um, power mall slash pick slash hammer slash sword power weapons, we'll say. Um, Four stars, almost five. Again, I love sword. I would go sword personally because I love the parry ability. Um, the two-handed hammer, not good, not worth it. Probably even on aberrant. Um, there's there's better weapons to pick. Um, now the the heavy rock drill. This is probably too expensive. Um, you definitely wouldn't stick it on a new gang and. But you could, I guess, if you just get flooded with with money, you may want to throw stuff like this on the guys. Um, but probably two stars for that. I don't love it. Um, there's other things like that. We'll talk it when we talk actual heavy shooting weapons that are expensive but good. This is expensive, but not not as good. Pistols, auto pistol. You know how I feel about the auto gun, auto pistol, just as good. Four stars there. Um, almost five because of the uh, ability to rapid fire. It's cheap. Last pistol, same price for them. Um, also four stars, but I wouldn't quite almost give it the reach because of the no rapid fire. Um, needle pistol, probably too expensive. I, I don't like, I mean, maybe I'm, I, I don't like poisony weapons, even in the Escher gangers, and they can upgrade that with taking their, uh, whatever the booster is for poison stuff. If you could take something like that, then those might get decently good um, and be worth the cost, but it's just too expensive uh, for this gang, for the needle pistol. Um, hand flamer, yes. I mean, nine inch template. Like I've shown, I got shut down by a template from a Kador player. Uh, I could not get my aberrant with two rending claws. It's actually uh, two uh, chain swords that he's supposed to have, but I gave him rending claws because Tyranids. Um, they both do rending is the way I see it. But um, shut him down. He couldn't get close to him because he couldn't not get hit and pinned. Um, so the guy just kept him pinned with a, a flamer the whole game. Um, so they're cheap. They're 50 credits. It's better than, you know, it's better than build, buying the big flamer. You don't need it to hurt them. You just need it to pin lock them. Um, and so it keeps those melee guys at bay. And also you wouldn't need to target them if they say had masks on stuff like that you're just like hey i'm flame throwing down this uh hallway i don't care who it hits it just is going down there boom lay the template out they, you don't care about their mask you got them pinned 
um, stuff like that. So good for that. Hand flamer, A+. Plus. I know some of the goon hammer guys would like to use it in combat. I could see that, but I would almost do like, kind of like how they do in 40K now where you get like uh, D3 hits with it or something like that. I don't know how you would do it in combat now uh, with Necromunda rules, but I would probably give them like D3 hits with it at strength. I want to say it's three, whatever the strength is, something like that. It, it could be okay. Um, maybe roll just the rapid fire dice and see what you get. Um, something like that. I, I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to something like that. I, I, it's a, it's a pistol weapon. Why not get to use it in close combat? Like every pistol weapon has been used since like second edition, uh, 40k. Special weapons, grenade launcher. Uh, yeah, by the way, I am that old. Second edition was my first edition of 40k. I get it. I'm 40. Um, grenade launcher is going to be five stars. This is probably their best special weapon. It's what I what I put on my, what's their champions called? Hybrids again? I just always call them uh, champions. Um, it's the best value at 55 credits. This thing does work for you. It's got the blast, uh, so it's not going to ever actually miss. It's just going to bonk around and, and, and explode somewhere near them. Um, five stars. I, I, you guys know how a grenade launcher works, and... It, it, it can throw it further than you can chuck the thing, and it's going to be a great weapon. Uh, decent, decent uh, ammo. Um, Flamer, this is probably two stars for that. Um, I had three written down because it keeps the guys at bay, but for the price you're paying, you might as well just get a hand flamer. Uh, there's no reason to pay for the big one. It, the little one does the same thing, and you're not worried about, again, you're not worried about hurting them. You're worried, you just want to keep them pin locked so they don't charge you. Uh, keeps them away from your adept. You know, again, I don't want your adept. With, you don't want those guys within three inches of your adept. You want to keep them out nine inches away. Keep an arm's length with that with those flamer templates. Web gun. Web gun's great in everybody's world. It's 125. I think it's 100 for the Deloc, which is much better. It's why it's the, the best weapon in the game for the Deloc. Um, 125, still worth it is what I'd say. A, uh, this is going to be a... Five star weapon all the time for web gun in any game, really. Uh, web gun's great, and um, it's it's just great always. Heavy weapons. These are the ones that I had to build, and again, I built a specific guy. I'll put them on the screen um, for this because I wanted to use heavy weapons, and I really hadn't done that with the Gene Sealer Colt. So I built him, played a few gangs um, to try him out. Uh, let's just go. Let's just go through the list here. Mining laser. Uh, also, if you want to go back to my Necromatha video where I talk about the percentage chance to do a serious wound, which is about the best you can predict because the skull is on the only one side of the die, but serious wounds are pretty much just as good. And then, shoot, they could, almost, they could also bleed out. Um, so you want to get a serious wound with the weapon. That's how you uh, deduce its effectiveness. So, mining laser, 53% chance. Um, heavy stubber, 51% chance. And again, from the math that the guy on Goonhammer did, I don't know if he takes into account, I know he takes into account the type of ammo you use, but I don't know if he takes into account the potential for getting one rapid fire versus two rapid fire, three rapid fire, with a with a heavy stubber, six rapid fire. Um, I don't know if he's taking it into account. I think he's just one shot, one kill on all of those, which to me means that with a heavy stubber, with two or more hits increases that incrementally to where your 51% becomes 101%, becomes 153%, whatever it is. Um, and all of a sudden it's way better. So mining laser is a five-star weapon. It's 125 credits and that's why it's probably the best one out there for them. Heavy stubber though, 145 credits, also a five-star weapon and my personal favorite. I love the heavy stubber, but I love the heavy stubber in any gang. Give it to an Escher, give it to a Kador, give it to these guys. I love it. It's a rapid fire auto gun. That's like a mega auto gun. So um, you can't beat that. It's uh, It's got a four plus ammo for it. It's, it's, it's so good. And again, I don't know if that kill percentage, I, I guess the answer is if I can get a hit with it, and then especially if I get two or more uh, on the roll to damage them 
I'm sorry, on the rapid fire roll, if I can get two hits or more on a rapid fire roll, they're going down. If I'm rolling, shoot five injury dice, something like that, they're going down. So to me, it's way better than the stats say, because I don't know if those stats are taking into account the rapid fire, because the rapid fire is so uh, randomized that you it's hard to t take, a, take mathematically. And I'm sure you could do that. Um, but at the same time, it's... Uh, it's to me much better because of the rapid fire. Seismic Cannon, 140 credits. Uh, that was probably three stars. I don't like seismic things. I've said that before. I know some of you guys that post stuff are like, oh, seismic's so good, it does this. Okay, guys, I get it, I hear you. And those are the, that's the weapon for you. I get it, that's your thing. Um, totally understand, totally understand. Just like auto guns, auto, your rapid fire guns are my thing. Uh, seismic weapons are some other people's stuff and that's cool. Um, now, you can get those extra arms. I guess here's where that extra arm comes in handy because you can stabilize your a heavy weapon with it. And that is amazing, allowing you to move and shoot with those arms. Um, if you'll read in the arm uh, deal, it gives you, I want to say it's an extra attack and it allows you to stabilize a heavy weapon um, in there, in the, in the stuff like that. So extra arms are critical to these heavy weapons. And that's why those hybrids are so amazing with the miniatures that they have uh, holding all those heavy weapons look so good because they have that third arm stabilizing, allowing you to move around and shoot because it turns the, the action of shooting them from uh, a double action to a standard action and um, a basic action. Uh, and now it's uh, something you can do. Grenades, again, these are the ones you can only chuck so far, but they have a lot of five inch uh, blast template stuff. And that's what I love. I don't like the li using that little template because when you're, you know, if you miss and it's going scrambling around six inches, that little template can miss stuff. But a five inch template, you could put it right directly on them. It could still scatter six inches and almost most of the time you're still gonna hit stuff um, as long as you're dead on target. Um, blasting charges, four stars, only 35 credits. Uh, really good weapon, 39% chance to, to do injuries. Um, demolition charge, 63% chance to do the damage, but, and it's a five inch blast template, but it's only a single one. You get one shot at it, um, that's what hurts you. And it's 65 credits, so it's twice as expensive. It's a one shot weapon, uh, one star. I'm sorry, I, 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 I get it, it could be good. I, I wouldn't put the credits. I, there's so many other things that, out here that I've just gone over that that I'd rather put those credits into. Frag grenades, only a 16% chance. This is something you'd wanna hit like three dudes with to increase that 16 times three, whatever that math is. Um, and it's a three inch blast template, not amazing. It's only 30 credits, so it's one of the, it's pretty much the cheapest grenade they can take, but um, two stars on that one. That's how we're gonna go. It's only strength three. It is a blast, but you gotta land it on top of them, and it needs to be a cluster of dudes to make it worth your time, um, which could happen. Um, most likely, usually if there's a cluster like that, there's a melee going on, and one of my guys is in there already, so I'm not gonna chuck a grenade in there. Um, incendiary charges, this is probably, probably the best one other than maybe the blasting charges. Five inch, uh, blaze, 40 credits, so it's five more than the blasting charges. Um, four stars. I, I like Blaze, so I, I'm, I'm almost five stars here, four and a half stars, um, but that's how I treat those grenades. All right, Necromaniacs, let's finish this up. Um, last stuff is the war gear and some of the equipment that I want to talk about. There's some important stuff in there, um, things like the hazard suit. Good. Most of the guys actually come with this already. Uh, it gives you immune to blaze, which can be very important, especially if you're bouncing around anything that might bounce back and uh, catch you on fire, stuff like that. But that immunity to blaze is good because it, it means you can't run out of position if you get caught on fire, um, which is what I usually use it for is you get those guys dug in that are really hard to get out. You blaze them and then they go running in a random direction. And next thing you know, they're out in the middle of nothing and get uh, taken out by my auto guns. Um, so I like it because of that. Um, it's only 10 credits if you need to add it on for some reason. Um, next would be the cult icon. Let's talk about that. Cult icon, I'm not going to use it because I don't run a melee oriented, uh, gang except for my big boys. Um, you know, they're running up there with the whips and the, the dual chain swords. Um, but I, 
I'd say the 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 cult icon is for generally because a you have to put it on a uh, champion or a leader, which means they have to be up there in the front. And if you're going to be sticking yourself up in the front like that, then you need them to be set up for, uh, that type of, uh, melee combat. Um, so it just allows them to activate more people, uh, during their turn. Um, so a, a leader can do up to, I guess, two or three, and then a champion can do one extra from what they can do, uh, if they have any. And so, you know, depending on skills and stuff like that, they could activate multiple guys. Um, but it allows them an extra activation of a guy near them, uh, I want to say within three inches. Um, so, and, and I like that. I mean, I've, I've, I've given it in some of my other videos, ways you can use those multiple activations uh, f as, as a tactic to open a door uh, and have guys prepped, ready to shoot through the door, um, ready to go there. So you do multiple activations, open the door, catch them out of cover, shoot, shoot with uh, the other two guys, stuff like that. But it's, it's, I don't love the cult icon yet. Maybe it's, I, I haven't used it in any of the games I played, but maybe if I try it out and then do some other things with it, I'll like it better, but we'll see. All right, let's talk about the Psychic Familiar. Um, five stars, this thing is awesome. It's a huge protective piece for your leader. Um, it's going to allow your leader to negate a hit on a, uh, as long as you can make a willpower check, um, which is huge um, to, to mitigate damage, especially if you get that one sniper shot or something that's gonna hit you and you're not quite, you weren't quite planning on it uh, in, in the board state, the, in the table state that you were in. Um, you take a, a lucky shot, pretty much. Um, this could save your butt. So this guy can, he has clamor. Um, he has the ability to stay with you all the time, uh, movement-wise. He has catfall, stuff like that. Um, he also can protect himself with pretty much a three-plus all the time save. And he has the ability to get skills, which is crazy. I've only just played a few, uh, games with them, and I, we haven't, like, leveled them up. Uh, but if they start getting skills, I guess that could get decently good. Um... But so it's it's a great piece to have. You want to keep it around. It protects your leader, um, you, especially on that psyker. You want to keep it near her so she can negate hits uh, and, and and protect herself. So these are huge. They're super important. Um, you want these on all of your leaders. Uh, great piece to have. Okay. Um, Losing a leader could be devastating these guys. Um, Adepts and Alphas are super important. Neophytes, uh, they can be upgraded to your leaders and, and champions, but um, you also can upgrade them to earlier generations of uh, the hybrids, and that is they get better as they get as their earlier generations because they're more um, gene stealery, I guess is the best way to put that. Um, so that's important, but so it's it's the game composition matters and that you want to leave yourself pieces to be able to give yourself leadership um because if you have just an abomination that that, that thing's not gonna be able to take over um and your gang members themselves have trouble so it's it's tough to lose pieces in this gang um because it's it's hard uh the the gang leadership line, uh, line of succession is tough to deal with so um because of that be careful you always want to have some champions ready to take over the leadership role um, and, and build from there. So it, 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 this this game could be tough because of all the restrictions we already talked about that they have in a campaign. Um, they're a tough game to play because of that. It's harder to get uh, hangers on. It's harder for them to get healed. Um, there, there's a lot of restrictions in these guys because they have so many good skills, because they have so many good characters. So they, they are punished when they lose guys. They're punished when they get hurt. Okay, uh, I think we talked about some of these things. The Alpha, uh, three arms, three pistols, and shooting skill. The Gunslinger is one of my favorite. I know I talked about it earlier on in the video. Um, the Acolyte uh, with, a, with a fighting knife with a third arm is good um, for the plus one attack and rending. Um, I would say give him the Heavy Stubber like we talked about in the weapons categories. Heavy Stubber because of the extra arm or maybe a Long Lass. Uh, that'd be another good weapon that, that you could stick with them. So they can be that guy who gets on the rooftop and pings guys down. Um, they have Cunning and Ferocity for their skills for the Acolytes. Good skill sets. Um, cunning, one of the best. Um, the Aberrant, I like it with two chain swords or two whips. That's the setups that I have for mine. I, I love the whip guy because of his range is just ridiculous to where you can't 
uh, kind of keep them at bay with a, just like a flamer template. Um, the chainsword guy is devastating as long as you don't have that to deal with. So you may want to run him with some auto gun guys near him to to pin that uh, flamethrower guy and then charge in with your aberrant. Skills like Unstoppable, which allow you on a 4 plus to discard, discard a flesh wound, so he kind of like regenerates, uh, is, is the way I think about it in <laughs> Tyranid uh, talk. Um, so they can get regen, and then uh, if at the end of the game, they can roll two, gi two dice for recovery if there are no flesh wounds on them. Um, so it's a, it's a way to protect yourself and protect that aberrant. They're, they're hard to damage, hard to kill, uh, hard to injure um, because of those things. Uh, the neophyte can take one special weapon. Um, that's one thing you, that's a little different. Look in that, like, don't miss that rule is that the, one of those guys in a gang, when you're building them, can take one special weapon, um, even though they're just a regular ganger boy. Um, so things to consider are like the long last, like I said, with the other one, or uh, probably a grenade launcher, probably the best uh, uh, deal, the, the best bang for your buck on that. Uh, no pun intended on it, I guess. Um, and that's even with a 4+. plus. You have the long last with a 4+, plus. it's upgradable. You start giving him some skills. That guy, that guy might become a specialist pretty quickly um, if, you can, if you can roll it up well. Um, finally, the Adept, they have Psyker, Cunning, and Leadership skills. Probably the main thing that we talked about, we talked about the um, Psychic abilities that they have, but they, those Psychic abilities are skills, is the, I guess the best way to put it. So you want to get probably one or two of those, but then you also want to advance their stats and other skill abilities um, to make sure that they get some of the best stuff. Like I said, mind control, you want that. Um, probably a sale, I, I would say you throw that on as well. Um, those are two of my favorites. Uh, Maybe even hip, hypnosis if you wanted to throw one on, but at that point they're getting expensive to put all that to stack all that st all those items on them. So you may want to consider just doing one to two psychic skills and then doing things to make them a better character um, in, in the fight. Um, probably the last thing we talk about is their special character that you can hire on in most of the uh, I guess bad gangs is their Hermophage Majos. He's ridiculous. He's 310 credits, which is expensive, but for what you get, you get move five inches, uh, weapon skill three, uh, strength four, three attacks, three wounds, uh, razor sharp talons, which is plus one strength and rending, uh, minus two AP, and damage is three. Oh, holy crap. He's gonna, he's gonna, if he gets in hand to hand combat with him, he's gonna shred someone because he's a gene stealer, pretty much. He's, he is as close to a Gene Stealer as you can get in this without making the Gene Stealer monster itself in the game, I would say. Um, he has Crushing Blow as a skill. He has Spring Up, so he can bounce right back up if you if you pin him down. Um, he's fearsome, so he can kind of give uh, a little bit of the same medicine back as the Corpse Grinder Colts. But really, he's just a good character. I really like him. Um, I have him modeled up. I haven't got him painted yet, but I, I really like this guy, and I, I plan on getting him in. So once we start our campaign, when uh, things get better with the COVID, we're going to get a campaign going with some of my friends, and we I, I'm probably going to use him if I get down a good 300 points, which knowing me, uh, I, I may find myself down that by that much easily. So he will definitely be probably one of the first characters that I bring in as a hired mercenary to, to help with my gang Uh Look up his stats. He's ridiculous. So, all right, guys, I appreciate it. Thank you for the wait on this. Um, I apologize it took so long, but hopefully things will calm down. Hopefully 2020 will be over soon and we can get back to making videos. I have a great idea. I've been watching some Command Zone, which is a Magic the Gathering uh, video, and they use the exact same editing stuff that I do. Um, so things like Christmas presents that I'm getting, like good microphone, um, better camera, and then also just working on my editing and stuff like that. I have a great idea of how to do tactics videos where I show you the tabletop. We do games together with me and another uh, player. And then we do interviews on talking about why we, what the decisions we're making, why we're making them, um, what we like, what we don't like about the, the characters we're using, stuff like that. Because we're going to try out a little bit of everything. And I hope you guys like that. Um, I, I've kind of played with some of the stuff that I've used uh, with the editing tool that allows me to show uh, laser beams going from the you know the gun to the target stuff like that so hopefully you can see 
where our guys are on the field and uh, what they're doing. And hopefully I can do that kind of like how they do in that command zone. Uh, if you've ever watched, if, if you're a magic uh, commander player or anything like that, you'll know what I'm talking about, but hopefully I can make it look like that. Hey, it's, it's not, it's not going to look like that. I can tell you right now, but it's in, in time with experience, hopefully you can look that way. So, all right. Thanks guys. Uh, please make sure you're uh, continuing to watch. We'll get more content out as soon as possible. See you guys. Static out.